Hello, welcome to VNews Podcast Daily. I'm following up today's highlights. Storm surging ravages northern and central coastal provinces, killing four people and injuring seven others. A delegation of Argentinian businesses seek trade in partners and opportunities in Ho Chi Minh City. A seminar in Busan has a close look into the issue of Vietnam-Korea multicultural families in the Republic of Korea. Storm Sunting has weakened into a tropical low and subsided on October 29th after killing four people and injuring seven others. It also damaged thousands of houses and vast areas of rice fields in northern and central coastal provinces. The National Committee for Search and Rescue said the 180-meter television tower in Namik City collapsed as winds hit 133 km per hour. Dozens of boats were destroyed and thousands of people were evacuated. Meanwhile, up to 300 to 400 mm of rain inundated the northern provinces of Quảng Ninh, Nam Định, Hải Phòng and Thái Bình. Many streets were flooded and trees uprooted. The Central Flood and Disaster Control Steering Committee said 1,500 soldiers were mobilized for search and rescue and to help victims repair houses and recover production. Earlier, 29 people in Haiphong City were rescued after their boats sank, while on TFS Key Hawaii drilling rig, 35 people, including 14 foreigners, became stranded on the rig because their boat was disconnected. The Air Force is currently working on a rescue plan. Besides wreaking havoc at sea, Storm Sunting has also hampered air travel, with national flag carrier Vietnam Airlines being forced to cancel 62 flights over the weekend. President Chun Ten Sang is touring several southern provinces to inspect the local socio-economic situation. He arrived in Bing Phu province on October 28th, where he visited a border guard station and met with local businesses. At the border post, President Sang praised the work of soldiers in maintaining security, assisting ethnic residents in poverty reduction, and driving socio-economic development. He stressed that winning the support of local people is very important for the border guard force in order to fulfill the task of defending the national border and building a border line of peace, friendship, and development. In a meeting with representatives from local farm processing businesses, the president showed great interest in the performance over recent time. The businesses reported that out of 1,000 processors in the province, only 300 were generating profit. The others are struggling to cope with falling prices of agricultural products, rising costs of production, and a shortage of capital. The president reaffirmed the government's commitment to supporting businesses with several policy adjustments on the pipeline to assist economic recovery. Later, during a working session with the provincial leadership, President Sang suggested that Bing Phu focus on tapping its advantages in land and climate to develop plans that generate high revenues and the farm processing industry. Court officials from border provinces in Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia concluded their two-day meeting on October 28th. The meeting adopted a joint statement reaffirming their commitment to step up cooperation to prevent and combat cross-border crime. The statement underlined their concerns over the impact of trans-border crimes on security and economic development of all three countries. The judges of the three countries stressed their commitment to boosting cooperation between Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia, especially among the three Supreme Courts and Provincial Courts in border provinces. The three countries have also agreed to set up a mechanism in each Supreme Court to handle problems in each country the most effective way, as well as coordinating and exchanging information between the Supreme and Provincial Courts. The meeting agreed to continue to exchange delegations at all levels to share their experiences and information.
A business delegation from Argentina is visiting Ho Chi Minh City to seek new opportunities in trade and investment. On October 29th, they attended a trade exchange with local firms. According to Argentinian Domestic Trade Secretary Guillermo Moreno, the 150 businesses attending the event are leading producers and exporters in his country in the sectors of food and beverages, garment and foodware materials, chemistry, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, machinery, electric appliances, construction materials and services. Director of the Ho Chi Minh City Planning and Investment Department, Tai Van Rui, introduced to the potential investors the fields that the city is calling for investment. Two-way trade between Argentina and Vietnam hit a record 971.7 million U.S. dollars last year, a year-on-year -year rise of 17 percent. The figure was 168 million U.S. dollars in the first three months of the year. Last year, Vietnam exported to Argentina foodware, rubber and rubber products, garment and textile products, machines and mechanical and electronic equipment, while importing soybeans, animal fat and plant oil, cereals and fuels from the Latin American country. According to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, agricultural cooperatives are crucial in the fight to eradicate hunger and poverty. Strong cooperatives and producers are able to alleviate some of the negative consequences of food shortages and other crises. Working together as cooperatives enable farmers to buy agricultural utilities at more competitive prices, lowering input costs and generating more profits. This is a florid control cooperative in Hatloy Commune, Milan District, Hanoi. The cooperative has almost 3,000 members who farm an area of over 300 hectares. Each member can earn almost 20 million Vietnam dollars a year, and the standard of living of those engaged in growing flowers has risen remarkably. My family has earned a lot more money since we stopped growing vegetables and planted flowers instead. As members of cooperatives, farmers are provided with the latest production techniques and have access to the latest scientific knowledge. They also receive help when purchasing logistic services and utilities, as well as when searching for buyers for their products. <laughs> The cooperatives will be very important in ensuring that uh, the farmers could obtain support in the marketing, in the inputs, in uh, new technologies, and they would be key to ensuring food security in Vietnam. There are 9,000 cooperatives involved in the agricultural sector in Vietnam, with a total membership of almost 7 million, accounting for about 58% of the farming workforce. Since 2002, cooperatives have contributed an annual average of 6.4% of the GDP, while consuming only 0.6% of the assessed investment. They have created 300,000 new jobs and have also been instrumental in the development of rural infrastructures across the country. In recent years, around 50,000 Vietnamese women have married Korean men, and this number is likely to increase in the future. The issue of multi country families has received attention in both Vietnam and the Republic of Korea. A recent seminar in Busan had a close look into this. Addressing the conference on October 28, the president of the Association of People Who Love Vietnam in the Republic of Korea, Park Wang Ju, said, The relationship between Vietnam and the Republic of Korea is now deeper thanks to the marriages between citizens of the two countries. Therefore, the conference was a great opportunity for both communities to look at better ways of ensuring happy multicultural families. Vietnamese Minister Councilor Nguyen Mạnh Đông thanked the Republic of Korea government and people for their warm feelings and the zealous support they have shown to the Vietnamese community in the Republic of Korea, as well as Vietnamese Korean multicultural families in particular. Participants heard several reports on issues that are crucial for women who emigrate to the Republic of Korea. They agree that most Vietnamese Korean multicultural families live on a low income. Therefore, it is essential to have a good understanding of the issues that affect multicultural families to offer them sufficient support. 
They also raised the necessity to establish an agency that specialize on multicultural issues and supporting such families. I will come to the end of our news today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.